So last year at the 2018 iCast show, even though the Corrado DC stole all the thunder of that show, after reviewing all the tackle that came out, I called it the year of the $99 baitcaster. And that's because no less than four tackle companies came out with all new, brand new $99 baitcasters. Now the first one was the surprisingly popular Shimano SLX, a reel that I criticized and thought it took a step backwards in performance. And then you got your uh, Daiwa CG80, which I also bought. It's a reel that the Daiwa fanboys pretend doesn't even exist. And then Luz came out with their new top seller, the Speed Spool, and they made it the LFS version. And I plan on getting my hands on that one in the future too. But the reel that caught my attention the most out of all the $99 baitcasters was this one. The Quantum Accurist S3 PT. So I don't know what goes first. Quantum Accurist PT S3 or S3 PT. But who cares? So I finally got my hands on one. I've been waiting for the prices to come down on eBay, but they've been holding really, really strong. But uh, I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger because I wanted to give Quantum a little bit of shine. And here we go. So look at this. You get this really nicely packaged paperwork. That's new. It's got your PT protection plan, three-year warranty which is good and a bunch of other things like the real diagram all in this little envelope so that's really nice that's pretty high-end I never seen anything like this out of a reel before and I've unboxed some expensive expensive reels all right so here we go look at this beauty so that was some very very nice elegant packaging from Quantum, so I'm pretty impressed. So I'm gonna put the packaging aside. Let's take a look at this reel. Look at that. I'm let you guys take a good look at it. It's probably gonna be hard to see the details of the white body against this white table. Check out that spool. All right, there you go, guys. Now, hopefully, this thing will have all the screws attached because I did get it off of eBay. But I'm gonna give it the good once over, check it out for details, take notes, and I'll be right back. Okay. So I've brought out some other reels here just to show you guys how good looking this new Quantum Accurist S3 is. Now the previous Accurist, in my opinion, was probably the ugliest $99 baitcaster of its time. And that's saying something because the other $99 baitcasters that it was competing against weren't real lookers. But as you can see, Quantum went with a uh, very radical polarizing design with the black and white contrast and all sorts of different design cues. And they went with something way more clean and understated with the new model. Now the frame is actually gray and it's matte while the side plates are white and they have just the right amount of red to set everything off so they don't have too much of any one particular color and they have just enough of a nice bright color to set off the more conservative white and gray color scheme so yeah let's take a look 
Now I'm gonna put this away for a second, but in my opinion, the S3 also blows away its rivals as far as looks goes. Here's the SLX. Now it's not nearly as small as the SLX, but I think it looks way, way better. The SLX is kind of mundane looking. Of course, you got this big graphic here that either you love or you hate. And then here's the rival from Daiwa, the CG80, which I think looks better than the SLX, but the color is just, you know, not my cup of tea. And then of course you got this top plastic chrome piece that uh, if you've seen Debo's fishing channel, um, this started peeling off for his CG80. He did a review of this reel, but it looks way, way better than any other reel in the $99 price point. And in fact, Quantum offers this reel in a total of four colors. If you don't like this white color scheme, you got your, I believe, green, you got your blue, and what's the other color? I'm gonna put all the other colors up. Now I have seen a purple one on eBay, but I think that's just someone doing Photoshop. I'm not sure if there's a real purple color, but I think the other color is either red or orange. But all right, I'm gonna bring back the old Acurist PT. Now, if you recall, if you've been a longtime subscriber, I did a groundbreaking six-way $99 baitcaster shootout starting way back in 2017. And the Quantum, while it offered the most for the money in my opinion, as far as features go, it had the heaviest spool by far. And I thought it was probably gonna come in dead last when it came to casting performance. But this thing actually came in third place and it beat out a lot of uh, other reels that had much lighter spools like the Diablo Fuego, the Revo X, the Luz uh, speed spool at the time. So it was surprising performance and a lot of reel for the money. And let me tell you what you got. You got your aluminum frame, your aluminum handle side plate, which is unheard of in a $99 baitcaster. You had the only reel that had dual brakes, so you had your internal centrifugal brakes that were adjustable. And then you had your magnets for fine tuning that were adjustable with this external dial. And you had a flipping switch, which no other reel had. But all these features combined with some other things like a really small spool tension knob, a really short handle and small knobs didn't quite add up to, I guess, the reel that Quantum was hoping for. But despite all that, I've heard that this was their best seller. Okay, so with the new Accurist, they've addressed a lot of the, what I feel as weak points of the old reel. So let's go over what's changed. Now, I thought that basically they just took the old frame and body and just gave it a new paint scheme, but it's actually a new frame and body. And the new reel looks to be slightly smaller, just a little bit, not by much. The frame is still aluminum, but I think this side plate is now graphite. They made no mention of an aluminum handle side plate and just by touching it, how fast it turns warm against my finger makes me think this is graphite and uh, they've also changed the thumb bar and this is the only one of the points I think they went backwards in with I like the thumb bar of the quantum PT before it it's a nice positive short throw no mush no wiggle whether you know the thumb bar is suppressed or whether it's not but uh, yeah I think the thumb bar went backwards but everything else went forwards I think they added one extra bearing this thing has eight plus one bearings I can't remember how many the old one had maybe it says it yes yeah, seven bearings well this one has 
nine bearings. So it actually gained two bearings. And it still retains its flipping switch, but it's a lot easier to engage. So with the old model, you had to, had to use a lot of force with your finger to get it to engage. With this new one, it's much easier. Now it's harder to disengage it, but there's also a couple of little dots here to show you whether it's on or off, which is kind of nice. Now, another huge improvement was a 90 millimeter handle. Now the old one suffered from what I believe was an 80 millimeter handle along with these really hard, slippery, rubberized knobs here. So reeling the old Accurist was not a very refined experience, but the new one now has got these really comfortable flat knobs that you find on a lot of their more expensive reels, a lot more surface area, very comfortable and I love flat knobs and of course you got the longer handle. Now they did change out the drag star. It's still the, you know, forward swept shape but it looks a little different, different color. It's still graphite. I personally like the looks of the old Dragstar better with its porting on the star arms. This one doesn't have that. And you can see they also changed the little plastic trim on the new model. It looks a lot better in my opinion than the old one. They kept the gear ratio options the same, I believe um, 6.3 and then the 7.0. So it's kind of lagging behind its competitors as far as higher speed options still. But uh, they also changed the spool tension. As you can see this one looks a lot better. It's got uh, this dark gray color with this red banding accent and then you got your red little end section here with the PT logo and it has micro clicks and there's not as much slop in between clicks as let's say um, an Abu Garcia that has a clicking spool tension so that's a plus now it is still kind of small like the old one but the main reason why I got this reel was for one thing, and that is the major change, in my opinion, was to the brake system. Now, out of all the $99 bait casters on the market, I think there's like around 15 or 16. I think only maybe four or five of them have centrifugal brakes. The rest of them are magnetic. And recently, the only $99 bait caster to have externally adjustable centrifugal brakes was the now discontinued Casitas. But that's changed now with this new Accurist S3. So these are now all centrifugal and I think it's what they call the ACS 3.0 and their higher end reels they have the ACS 4.0 and I'm not sure what the exact difference is but we're going to also talk about the spool. Now if you take a look at the height of the reels, that's another thing. I believe the new reel is a little bit lower on the reel seat than the old model. So that leads me to believe that they may have shrunk in the size of the spool as far as diameter goes. But what really got me to pull the trigger was that there's a uh, online tackle review website that uh, stated this spool was only 13 grams. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, I gotta get one now. So that would make this probably the lightest spool in the $99 Baycaster class history. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull out the scale and see what's what. So I got the scale out and before we start weighing these things, 
I just want to let you guys know that I pretty much sampled every single braking system from every real manufacturer within the last 10 years except for one and that is the externally adjustable centrifugal system from Banax and uh, in case you didn't know Banax is the Korean factory that makes quantum reels or assembles them so this is going to be the very first reel that I have that has these externally adjustable centrifugal brakes so I have no clue what they even look like inside there's really no pictures online of them either so before we get into that though let's turn the scale on and get weights on these things now the old reel was heavy I think it was the heaviest reel in its class at the time because of all the aluminum that it used and oh wait a minute all right so to ounces it was eight point almost 8.3 ounces very very heavy reel now the new one oh shit now the literature says that it's supposed to weigh like 7.8 ounces but this thing is only 7.3 so it gained I'm sorry it lost over almost an ounce over the old model and just picking them up one after the other I can't really feel it well maybe I do but it's actually lost a lot of weight I guess due to the side cover now being graphite so that's definitely an improvement I do like light reels but let's get to the good stuff now I don't see I guess all right okay there we go so I didn't read the instructions but they uh, it's obvious that to get to open the side plate you pull this latch here and I don't know if you go up or down okay you go down let's take a look at these brakes these are very weird looking. I don't see any kind of brake arms. I see the brass ring here. But where are the brake arms? Hmm. I'm going to have to try to figure that out. But we're going to get to weighing these spools. Now, the website that reported that this reel had a 13 gram spool, they are known for having typographical errors a lot so hopefully it was not a typo on their part but yeah it feels really really light it feels super light and there you can really feel the difference between the two so they might be right okay so let's see if it lost any kind of size and it looks like yeah the spool is much much smaller I would venture to say that this spool is probably either 32 or 33 millimeters in diameter because this was a 35 millimeter spool and there's a big difference in size there. I have to get the actual specs. All right, so it's got a bearing on it, but let's weigh the old spool and I believe it had the heaviest spool in its class at the time, but it still cast it quite well. All right, so now we're to grams, and this has a bearing as well, but it had a 20.77 gram spool. So that was the heaviest by far, and it was the biggest as well, but it still casted pretty well. It casted, um, outcasted a lot of the other much lighter spooled reels in a lot of the tests that I did. All right, moment of truth. Boom, I guess they were right, 13.17 grams. And that is amazing and it has a bearing on it. So you know what? I'm gonna take this bearing off and see what the real weight is. Okay, so the spool bearing is off and you can see it is heavily ported. It's a lot of porting going on. 
got the good looking red accents and some of the porting makes it look like it has the MGL style porting that's kind of cool now I can tell you that they did use an aluminum spool shaft versus steel for the old one that saves a lot of weight and of course the size differs but let's get down to business boom 11.5 gram spool in a $99 bait caster that is way way lighter than the previous lightest spool I believe that was the Casitas at like 15.2 or 15.3 grams that is ridiculous this is like bordering on bait finesse lightness man quantum is not playing around they are aiming to take the title of the best $99 bait caster that's for sure okay so just to show you the significance of this light of a spool in a $99 bait caster I brought the spools out of several different reels. Now here's the spool of the winner of the six-way $99 bait caster, the Shimano Casitas. And this thrashed all the other reels in casting distance quite easily. But this spool weighs 15.3 grams versus 11.5 grams. Okay, so here's the spool of the $240 Daiwa Tatula Elite Long Cast 14.1 grams 11.5 grams and then here's the spool of the $280 Cronark MGL 13.6 grams 11.5 grams and one more spool the 400 plus dollar Shimano Metanium MGL right around 14 grams now of course this has a bearing that probably weighs like 1.5 1.6 grams but that's still gonna put this spool at about 12 and a half grams so still a gram heavier than the Quantum and just to show you guys they look pretty identical as far as looking at the spools from the side with that porting so that's pretty amazing considering that the brake assembly is still attached so I tell you what I am gonna be super excited to string this thing up take it out in the water and see what's what because it has the potential to decimate even the previous champion Shimano Casitas. So it really bothered me that I didn't know exactly how these brakes work just by looking at them. So I took a few minutes to study them and I think I figured it out. Alright so you see the brake hub attached to the spool and on the hub you'll see that there's these arms shooting out and there's a total of nine. Now inside each little arm is a little brake shoe that I've been trying to get one of them to pop out and I can't seem to do it but yeah in each one of these arms is a brake shoe that pops out and hopefully they'll pop out uh, because if they don't then you know this is not gonna cast very well and it's gonna blow up extremely easily but if you notice each arm is at a different height than the rest so some are high some are really low and I looked at the other part of the brakes this brass hub and I was thinking that if I turned the dial that there would be something moving inside here that would either activate or deactivate those brakes but actually what happens is when you turn the dial this brass ring moves farther away or closer to those brake arms so I've retracted it to the free setting so it has moved the farthest away so basically the closer this ring comes to the spool the more shoes can touch it 
giving you more or less brakes. And you can see, it might be hard to tell, but this brass ring is angled. It's not straight. There's like a little angle there. So that's how these brakes work. Hopefully they'll be just as good as, you know, Shimano's SBS Infinity. Now, I counted the number of clicks, and I believe there's a total of either 13 or 12 clicks for a total of 14 or 13 brake settings. And the clicks feel pretty good. As you can see, the numbers are really small, but you got uh, a range of 10 for maximum, all the way to free, which I believe probably doesn't engage any brakes at all. But yeah, that's how Quantum's ACS 3.0 externally adjustable braking system works. So it's interesting to note that I actually looked into the paperwork to see if they gave any kind of diagram or kind of explanation on how the brake system works. And there wasn't any, but they did give you directions on how to set the spool tension. So I'll let you guys read that. So basically, if you read this, they want you to set the spool tension up tight. Basically, not to just illuminate the side to side play, but when you tighten it up and slowly loosen it, the lure falls slowly to the ground. But I'm gonna try to cast it both ways to see which one's the best. All right, so let's talk about the rest of the features, at least the ones that I found interesting and important. Now, they say that the reel is lubricated with Quantum's hot sauce. Now, in case you didn't know what that is, that's that red lubricant. It's not as thick as grease, but it's not as thin as something like this hedgehog oil. So, if the gears are lubed with that, I think that should be okay, but hopefully the bearings are not lubed. I don't think they are on the bearings or there would be some kind of a red stain on the bearings. So that's good. Now speaking of bearings, they say they have the PT or performance tune bearings. There's no kind of information on whether, you know, they're higher spec, no ABEC rating, no indication of different material used, other than the fact that they said that these were just, you know, handpicked out or singled out to have the best performance, I guess, out of a batch of bearings. Now it's got what they call the salt guard protection. So this is salt water safe, which is interesting because there is a salt water version of this reel. Now it's got a, what they call a multi-disc drag system that has carbon and ceramic washers. Now I think I read somewhere that the maximum stopping power is like 18, 18 pounds. And what's very, very interesting is that they say that this has a two bearing pinion. So basically two bearings support the pinion, which is exactly like Shimano's X-Ship. And the fact that they kept the long spool shaft, which enhances that two bearing pinion design, in my opinion. So for 99 bucks, this thing has Quantum's version of X-Ship. I'll have to look at the schematics to see if that's true, but I believe them and they did up the bearing count by two, if you remember. So there's nine bearings now. And then of course, you probably saw at the beginning of the video, it comes with a three year warranty, which is always nice to have. Okay, so to wrap this video up, I think it's pretty obvious by now that Quantum is out for blood in the $99 Baycaster class. And they pretty much addressed all the bad points, at least in my opinion, of the old Accurist. They made it a lot better looking. And in fact, I think this is the best looking reel in the $99 Baycaster class and probably one of the better looking reels, period, that's available right now. They lined it up by one ounce, so it's significantly lighter. That was a, a weak point of the old model. They gave it a much longer handle and much bigger and more comfortable knobs. They gave it the micro click spool tension. And of course, more importantly, 
they gave it that rid ridiculously amazing lightweight spool. And they also gave it the only externally adjustable centrifugal brakes in the $99 Baycaster class. So yeah, and don't forget the double bearing pinion. So this thing has all the numbers of a much, much more expensive reel. And on paper, it should decimate every other $99 baitcaster out there that's currently available. And probably a lot of more expensive baitcasters as well. But of course, you know, on paper numbers versus on the water performance are sometimes two different things. So, of course, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to string it up with some line, mount it on a rod, and see if this thing casts as good as its numbers would suggest. So, see you guys out on the water for that. Alright guys, thanks a lot.